Any person that has flown in a jet over the last 50 years has directly benefited from Richard Whitcomb's genius. He once said, if a human mind can figure out a better way to do something, let's do it. He also admitted, I can't just sit around, I have to think. Well, the more Whitcomb thought about ways of perfecting powered flight, the more amazing were both the concepts he discovered and the innovative designs that followed. Richard Travis Whitcomb was born on February 21, 1921 to Kenneth and Gladys Whitcomb in Evanston, Illinois. As a child, Richard's family, including sisters Marion and Marjorie and brother Charles, moved to Worcester, Massachusetts. His father, a mechanical engineer, had been a balloon pilot. His grandfather was an inventor who had known Thomas Edison. So it was no surprise when young Richard took over the family's basement to build model airplanes. Not one to waste his time on models that would sit on a shelf, Richard instead concentrated exclusively on airplanes that would flop. These were the golden years of aviation, the era of Lindbergh and Earhart, and of great leaps forward in the aviation industry. As a high school student, Richard's fascination developed into a concentrated interest in aerodynamics, earning him an engineering scholarship to the Worcester Polytechnic Institute, WPI, in Massachusetts. As his graduation approached, the applied research being done at the Langley Memorial Aeronautical Laboratory at Langley Field, Virginia, attracted Whitcomb's keen interest. When this division of the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics sent a recruiter to WPI, Whitcomb recalled, I was just waiting for the guy to hand me the papers. In 1943, Richard graduated from WPI with highest honors with a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering. Richard found Langley an ideal working environment. It was the middle of World War II, a busy time for aeronautical engineers who were constantly challenged to improve our military air superiority. By the early 1950s, many of the challenges revolved around experiments to attain sustainable and controllable transonic flight. This was the region between Mach 0.75 and 1.25, where jets of the day encountered compressible flow. Shock waves streaming from the wings and bodies of aircraft caused loss of lift, rising drag, dangerous buffeting, and sometimes loss of control and structural failure. Convair's new swept wing F-102 Delta jet was supposed to be our first supersonic fighter but flight tests were proving disastrous. No matter what was tried, nothing worked. Whitcomb, who had already developed a more effective wind tunnel design, had been giving the problem much thought. If the shape of the F-102 fuselage could be pinched, similar to the shape of a Coke bottle, he surmised it would reduce the shock wave drag emanating from where the wing met the fuselage. Tests in his wind tunnel proved the theory correct. He had reshaped the airplane with what came to be known as Whitcomb's Area Rule. This revolutionary modification increased a warplane's supersonic speed by 25% without increasing engine power. In 1954, barely over age 30, the Area Rule earned Whitcomb the prestigious Collier Trophy and the Exceptional Service Medal from the Air Force. In the late 1960s, Richard came up with the second of his pioneering discoveries, the supercritical wing, a wing shape that is flatter on the top and rounder on the bottom with a downward curve on the trailing edge, delays the onset of drag, increasing the fuel efficiency at transonic speeds. With this breakthrough, jets could fly 100 miles per hour faster without increasing engine power, thus saving fuel and flying time. Whitcomb's supercritical wing design was of vital strategic significance to both military and commercial airline communities, especially in the oil crises of the 1970s. It earned him the National Medal of Science from President Nixon and the 1974 Wright Brothers Memorial Trophy, among other accolades. In the late 1970s, Whitcomb incredibly came up with yet a third breakthrough in transonic research, the improved design of wingtip winglets upturned fins that reduced drag. The addition of this deceptively simple innovation has become ubiquitous on military and civil jet transports with good reason. Whitcomb's winglets 
provide for higher speeds, 6 to 7 percent better fuel efficiency, and thus more range. In 1980, Whitcomb retired from NASA after 37 years of such pioneering applied research, all of it done at Langley. Most would concur it would take an extraordinary breakthrough to match any one of his remarkable achievements, let alone three. The man once recognized as being the Leonardo da Vinci of American aerodynamics passed away in 2009 at age 88. Tonight, the National Aviation Hall of Fame proudly honors a visionary whose breakthroughs were vital to improving flight and advancing the jet age, Richard T. Whitcomb.